You'll likely find as you are building and polishing workflows that when you build one right away, it doesn't give you the exact output that you want out of the gate. That's really okay. Part of the process of working with AI is doing a bit of the work up front so that you can save hundreds of hours on the back end. And all that means is usually modifying these action steps along the way. So in front of me, I have this workflow that we use internally. It's heavily modified to serve our needs uh, for our blog. And essentially what I do, here's how the workflow works. I'll walk you through it. We give a keyword and that's it. So we do keyword research with chat and then Ahrefs and we verify that. Once we have a keyword we know we want to target, we put that in and then our workflow will search Google. It will pull the headings from the top uh, three to five results. And that way it can understand what type of content is needed to stay competitive. It will also pull related keywords that it believes are going to help this uh, piece of content rank. It will then bid a content brief, take that into a formal content outline, and we can hand either of these to uh, freelance writers that we work with internally as well. But then it will also draft a long form piece of content. So we have this from start to finish. All of these little tasks gets along the way, and to get from just a keyword to a long form blog post, we have this really impressive workflow. But it took a lot of modifications to get it where we wanted it, particularly with the brief and the content outline. And that's because we wanted our blog to follow a certain style. So I'm going to show you in any workflow that you're working with and in any action that you're working with, all you have to do is click on that action and you'll have the prompt, you'll have the background, and you'll have these advanced settings. So let's go through these really quickly. The prompt is where you are telling, um, you're, you're telling the AI in this action step what you want it to do. So in this case, we are saying we want it to extract headings. We want it to then take that and create a formal content brief. But you'll notice these little highlighted parts here, and these are former steps. So you have extracted headings, and this was from a former step. You have the original keyword, which was our original input. And you have related keywords, which are another step. So this step of building a content brief, this action, is dependent upon the previous information from this workflow. It's actually pulling on context that it had generated earlier to build something larger than just that action itself. So we have all of these components. And if we wanted to add a component, for instance, if we get to the content outline and we want that to include the brief, you'll see here, Let's say that we also wanted this to include the related keywords. We could just write related keywords, then use the hashtag symbol, and that will pull up the workflow inputs, the workflow actions, and then your info base entries. And we're gonna talk about info base in the next video. For now, just focus on using that hashtag to give your prompt more relevant context. So if you want it to focus on the keywords, you would put hashtag related keywords, and then say something like, make sure you include where the related keywords are, um, or where the related keywords should be positioned within the final blog post. And if we were to give it instructions like this, then presumably our content outline would include those related keywords on top of the brief. We're teaching it what to focus on in the prompt. This is where we're giving it instructions. So that's the prompt and that's how you can call up other either manual input or excuse me yeah your manual input uh, the other workflow actions or info base entries and again we will cover info base in the next video but for now let's turn to the background and the background is where you are telling um the, the essentially the background prompt what you are telling the llm that it is an expert in so this is where you'll see your content strategist skilled at building detailed content outlines. If we were running a sales workflow, we might say you are an expert sales representative uh, who is able to accomplish X, Y, and Z. And then we will also add some examples. Now, here I've added examples from Infobase. And again, we'll be doing that in the next video. But you can essentially just copy and paste or outline the structure that you want for the asset that you're building. So in this case, the content outline. So for us, we want to all of our blog posts to tell a short and punchy keyword friendly story that says, hey, here's this idea or concept. Here's why this thing matters. Here are some uh, internal links you can get. Here's how painful this was before AI. 
and then some suggestions for internal links. And look how easy this is with workflows. All of our blog posts follow that same narrative. How hard was this task before AI? How easy is this task now after AI? But we put this structure in the background prompt, and we would also likely put an example of a good outline that we're looking for. When you can give a good example in the background, you're much more likely to get better quality output on the back end when you run your workflow. Then as we work to these advanced settings, you just click this down, and you can actually choose which language model you want to use. If you've ever worked with ChatGPT or Copy AI Chat, and you've likely used OpenAI's GPT-4. For a long time, it was the top of the line, or at least the most popular large language model. However, we have switched to being uh, model agnostic, which means we don't just work in with OpenAI uh, language models. Instead, we also work with Anthropics. So if there's any downtimes for one or the other, you can still run workflows just using a different model. And we've really become big fans of Claude 3. You have Opus, Sonnet, and Haiku. Workflows give you a chance to play with different language models and understand what will give you the best output that you're specifically looking for in your brand's voice or the tasks that you're trying to accomplish, whether that's researching accounts for your sales team or generating content for your marketing team. Whatever it is that you're doing, this gives you the opportunity to see which language model will get you the best quality output the quickest. So these are in the advanced settings. You can then also set the temperature or how creative the output should be. And then you can give it a max or minimum character or word length. This is really important. At, let's say you're writing emails and you don't want them to be too long if it's for cold outreach or you're writing SEO friendly titles or meta descriptions that really depend on character count. You can go here and either put a limit on the minimum or maximum length for characters or words. Now when you're done, all you have to do is click save action. It will save. You can publish the workflow and you can go through and refine each action in the same way by focusing on the prompt, the background, and the advanced settings. For instance, we might want to change this and then update that since it's uh, we haven't updated that since we, Claude 2 came out. Same thing, you go through, you make sure that all the relevant information is in that prompt. Again, if you want to pull former steps, all you have to do is hit that hashtag and you will see the initial manual input along with all the preceding workflow actions and you can add that to the prompt to give more context to each action. And then you have the background where you are providing examples, structures, and really telling the LLM what is an expert in. That way it can do a better job generating the campaigns or the assets that you need. So that's how you can modify your workflows by each individual action. In the next video, we are going to dive into Infobase, which is how you can save and use context around your brand or even brand voice to help refine the, the quality of the output that you get from these workflows.